In this video we're going to be making the expansion link and um, this link uh, is one of the components that connects the crankshaft to the uh, piston valve and the valve body and uh, you'll see how it works probably much later in the build uh, but essentially you would um, adjust the cutoff by moving this back and forth on a central well you know it's really hard to explain <laughs> it's, it's kind of a complicated piece of uh, linkage uh, but we are going to make it out of this piece of steel that I just cut off this fits perfectly this is a one sorry <laughs> this is a one to one scale drawing so I'm just going to cut this out and we're going to trace it and just sort of grind and drill and file our way to this part so the way I'm going to stick this is I'm just going to use some uh, spray adhesive and uh, let me get some spray this on just so I don't get my table sticky that was probably way too much Alright, let that dry. First thing we're going to do is just spot these holes. <clears throat> um, that way, um, if the paper and stuff flies off, I have a good reference. Okay, these two are 3 sixteenths. The middle one's a quarter inch. We're back uh, kind of a square one because what happened was my center drill tip it was a really tiny center drill broke off and I thought it fell out of the hole but I guess it didn't so when the drill bit tried to drill through it it was kind of deflected to the side and drilled a hole next to it so I'm starting over and this time I am just gonna center punch the holes I think that'll be more accurate anyway so I've just spotted these two end radii, or end circles, I, I don't know, end curves, and we're just going to drill through them. Alright, we're in the middle now, and I just did a bunch of holes um, on the drill press, so now we're just kind of have to clean between these holes with an end mill. And this is all to just reduce the amount of work that I'm going to have to do in hand filing this. We're going to do as much as we can with the machines. So this is going to considerably lessen the load of filing this smooth. So 
Notice how I didn't, we didn't cut it out yet. That was so it's easier to hold. And I'm going to do this all the way until this is completely done. And then cutting it out is going to be the very last step. Because even now we got to hold it in vices, or in the vise, and get our files in there. I'm sure some of you guys watch Tom Lipton's channel, Ox Tools. And uh, one thing I learned from him is that he's kind of a file junkie. Um, jobs like this, it just seems like you know, he always gets a kick out of. So we're going to gonna look for a smaller file. But we're just going to get in here. And file this away. I'm going to have to get a smaller file. File, but it's going to be long, tedious work. But, uh, it'll be worth it in the end. So I'll bring you guys back when I'm done with this way later. Okay, it's not 100% perfect because uh, there's still a little indentations there in a couple spots from the drill bits um, but so we're gonna make a die block that actually rides in here and it's gonna be you know pretty long and it, it it just might be that these little indentations don't matter um, because it's gonna be very big and uh, so we're gonna I'm gonna leave it like this for now after I make the die block we're going to tweak this so that the die block moves back and forth smoothly because I'm, I'm sure it's going to need tweaking for, for sure. So now I'm just going to cut off the bulk of this stuff with the angle grinder and then we're going to, we're going to uh, profile it with the file. Okay, uh, so I said file, but I think I can actually just do this on the bench grinder. Uh, I'm wearing welding gloves because this is going to get hot. Um, they don't have a little thing of water to cool it down with, and plus I don't want to do that because I want to keep the paper on there. So, let's, uh, let's do this. Alright, so here it is. It came out all right. I'm not super happy with it. The slot is is pretty nice. The slot and the holes are nice. I took a little bit. You can see I took a little bit too much off on these ends right here. Um, <clears throat> if I if I really wanted to, and I might, uh, I can just add some weld in here and then grind and file it down to size. So I mean, it it's it's gonna work. Um, I wish I had seen how close these holes are to the bottom. Again, I could add some weld there and, um, you know, um, fill it in. But, again, for now, I think I'm going to leave it because it's got to be fully functional. Um, hopefully, you know, these aren't too weak. And if they are, again, I can, I can fix them. Um, so, let me show you kind of how this is going to work. Again, and it's a really complicated thing to explain, so bear with me. Alright, we're looking at the side of the engine. I started doing something for the exhaust manifold here and I, I added this so I can easily put air into it. <clears throat> but this guy is going to go in here in this little fork we made. And um, so recall, yeah, that's connected to the valve, piston valve. So this isn't what it's going to be, but there's going to be a block in here called the die block and then a pin goes through it. So let's kind of just pretend that we already made that by putting this bolt. And then make sure you guys are in frame. Okay, so the way this works is there are two cams. Two cams on the crankshaft. And those cams have rods that attach to this hole and this hole respectively. Now, when when this expansion link is in the middle what's going to happen is as, as the uh, crankshaft rotates the two cams they're at 180 degrees out of phase uh, one's going to pull down one's going to push up and, and, and it's just kind of it's just kind of 
just gonna do something like this where it just rocks back and forth right and, and it doesn't really move the valve because one side is always canceling the other now as you start um, to on this hole here is going to be a linkage as you start to let's say push towards one way um, when one goes up and the other goes down it's going to push it a little bit and then it's going to go like it's again it's hard and then it's going to go like that and then it's going to you know it's going to pivot and then when you're on the extreme what this is going to have the largest throw is going to be something like that and then when it goes the other way it's going to be something like that um, so with this you could continually adjust the steam cutoff which is the point on the cylinder when you cut off steam and just let the expansion of steams take it to the rest of the way the bigger cutoff you have the more power and torque you get for a lot of reasons that I'm going to make a video about um, so and what's great about this is if you suddenly switch it to the opposite direction what that will do is actually the linkage will move a little it'll move a little bit as you switch it um, that is going to reverse the engine so um, you can literally change the directions of the engine on the fly as you are running it um, and anything with a steam engine in a vehicle sort of setting doesn't have first of all it doesn't have any transmission and it doesn't have reverse and again I'm going to do a video about that kind of stuff in the in the past so that's kind of how what the expansion link does and um, how, how it works now I probably will do some sort of profiling on this and adding a little bit more meat under these holes um, but I think I'll do that off camera hey guys I didn't show it because it was the same process pretty much as the uh, expansion link but I made the die block and I just filed this from a piece of steel you can see how it moves smoothly in there with very little to no play so this will be how we adjust and again you'll you'll see more you'll see it work in action towards the end oh, I had to clear a little bit over there so, so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching see you later